Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Charlotte Wildlife Stewards March program, uh, which is Nature Preserves of Mecklenburg County. Uh, we've got a few housekeeping items to start off with. So uh, to start with, please place your phones on mute and type any questions you may have in the chat or raise your hand and they will be addressed before the end of the evening. Um, slide two. Um, I want to start off with who we are. We are the Charlotte Wildlife Stewards and we're a local chapter of the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. We're one of 19 local chapters across the, across the state and our mission is to create, preserve, and protect wildlife through education, engagement, and enjoyment. We have an all-volunteer leadership team made up of myself, Margaret Sexton as president, Ernie McLaney as, as past president, Donna Bowles as vice president, Eric Mick is a treasurer, Caroline Brenniger is a secretary, with Amanda Carlisle, Danya Holly, Clyde Kaiser, Connie Harris, and Sandy Dixon, all serving as board members at large. Next. Do you know that the city of Charlotte has 1,385 certified wildlife habitats and that 128 of them was added just last year? Do you know that you only need five items to certify your property as a habitat by the National Wildlife Federation? You only have to provide, supply food, which can be native plants or trees, which provide food. And you can supplement it with feeders. You, can, you need to have water. All living things need water. And it can be supplied either naturally, either by stream, pond, or lake, or by fountain or birdbath. Uh, you need to have shelter, which is uh, can be provided by having native plants, trees, and can be supplemented with brush piles or, or houses. Um, you need a place to raise young, which again could be native plants or trees and can be supplemented with houses. Uh, you need to practice sustainable landscape practices, uh, which such as you know having a rain barrel, uh, planting native plants, composting, or in or eliminating invasive species. So next, you can become involved by volunteering at an event, participating in our events and contests, or joining our chapter via the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. You can assist in one of the chapter committees, such as communications, education, events, programs, finance, or marketing. Um, you can get involved and served on our leadership board. You can donate to our chapter, which is a, a 5013C entity. Or you can become a corporate sponsor, or you can do any or all of those. Next. By joining the Charlotte Wildlife Storage, you get a monthly uh, North Carolina Wildlife Federation newsletter called the Wildlife Wire. You get a quarterly NCWF journal called Wild Lives, Wild Places. You get access to members only events, which we have three to four a year. You get to network with other nature lovers from uh, across the state and especially Mecklenburg County. And you get bragging rights. Uh, most recently, we've won chapter of the year and proud partner of the canopy. Next. We want to thank our current sponsors, Wild Birds Unlimited and Honey Bee Realty. Without their financial support, we wouldn't be able to host some of the events and programs that we do. And next. Our current upcoming events include I Spy, uh, Insects in Winter, which is an ongoing virtual event. And we have a contest for the month of March. And if you practice, if you go to that link, uh, you will get to see the uh, program. And we also have a group read, The Nature of Nature. And uh, we're encouraging people to read or post their thoughts about the book on our Facebook or, uh, or any of our other social media accounts. Um, our April program, which will be the second uh, Tuesday of April, 
uh, is Pollinator Gardening in the Piedmont. We hope to have you join us for that. We're also going to have a silent auction in April. Uh, right now it's scheduled for the 16th through the 25th. And if you'll stay tuned on our social media pages, you'll have more details. Currently, we have several items ranging from a zigzag puzzle up to a, a three night stay in Bryson City. So put that on your calendar. Uh, and then uh, in June, uh, right now it's um, June 12th through the 20th, we're scheduling a Wild on the Water, Wild in the Woods fundraiser. Um, and we, again, stay tuned on our social media pages for more details about that. We're still in the planning stages. So next. Now our vice president, Donna Bowles, is going to introduce our speaker and program for the evening. So Donna, take it away. Hey, so we're going to learn all about these treasures that we have in Mecklenburg County. Uh, Matthew Morgan is an environmental educator with Mecklenburg Car County Parks and Rec. He was a city kid growing up in Atlanta, but has always been fascinated with nature and wildlife. He loved watching nature documentaries as well as shows and, and uh, movies about animals. So he and I are kindred spirits here. After graduating with a degree in biology from Maryville College, Matthew volunteered at the Atlanta Aquarium, worked at Zoo Atlanta and the Tennessee Aquarium. He's passionate about wildlife and conservation and loves his job educating visitors at Stevens Creek Nature Preserve. Um, I wanna add that I met Matthew back in October of 2019 at our last Kids in Nature Day event. Um, he, he was there representing Stevens Creek Nature Preserve and I was just so impressed by his knowledge his enthusiasm, um, the way he connected with the kids and the adults, and we're just tickled that he's going to be sharing with us tonight. Okay, Matthew, it's you. Well, thank you, Donna, and thank you everyone for coming out and attending this program tonight. I hope, I pray that I provide enough information for you guys to uh, to take with you and to explore these nature preserves around the county because I mean I will say this week probably is the best time to go out because it's such beautiful weather outside uh here today I mean yesterday was great today's great I think it's all the way great to Saturday evening so if you do not take your opportunities and chances to enjoy the nature preserves around the county I'm going to come and find you yes Yes, I will come to find you. I have a special set of skills. No, I'm just playing. I don't have a special set of skills like that. I'm not like Liam Nielsen from uh, the movie Taken. I'm not like that at all. Not like that. Uh, with that being said, thank you again uh, for Charlotte Wildlife Stewards. Uh, Mrs. Donna Bull, thank you. Margaret Sexton, th thank you. Uh, to North Carolina Wildlife Federation, Tara Moore, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is an honor and a privilege to present this information to you all. Um, just going to focus on quite a few nature preserves, as I stated earlier, around the county, because there are a lot, but I'm going to focus on more the accessible ones. Um, there are certain ones that are uh, certainly uh, well underdeveloped, and they're just utilized for more of just natural habitat. And so I'm going to focus on the ones that we can visit and we can enjoy our time in our uh, in nature. So if you're ready, if you can give me a thumbs up or, you know, just a high five or. All righty, there we go. There we go. I see it now. I see it. I see it. Well, let me share my screen. All righty, then. Hope everybody can see. So like I said, thank you again. And let's get this ball on the road, all right? So I am an environmental educator, as Ms. Mrs. Donna Bowles stated, uh, at Stevens Creek Nature Center and Preserve. And I'm a part of the Division of Natural uh, Nature Preserves and Natural Resources. And so our theme is to protect the regions, the biodiversity, and natural heritage for, I mean, it's inherent value for the benefit of future generations by promoting open space preservation, conserving natural communities, and fostering awareness and stewardship through environmental education and outdoor recreation. And our vision is to have natural communities exist within Mecklenburg County and perpetuity for these 
interconnected, high quality natural areas to benefit and be valued by all citizens. Yes, notice a lot of words, but in 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 pretty much to sum it down, it is my job to inform everyone about the unique things about our natural area uh, through the use of environmental education and hopefully foster positive attitudes so you can make informed decisions about wildlife and conservation and the natural world in general. So well, uh, part of this presentation, I'm going to dive in into a little bit of the history of the nature preserves here in the county because I don't think a lot of people know about the history around here. So I just want to dive in into that aspect first, OK? Uh, in terms of the history of the nature preserves and natural resources, so if you ever been to any other parks around the county, our very first park actually was McDowell Nature Preserve, or what it was called McDowell Park, which I believe was uh, purchased in 1975. And by 1981, we had three parks here in the county which were McDowell, a uh, lot of nature plantation park and preserve, and McAlpine. Uh, and just a side note for everyone, that picture to, uh, on your screen is actually a, a picture taken from, a, from me at McAlpine. I'm a particular birder. I love go bird watching, and McAlpine is a great uh, park to go bird watching. But, um, Back to the history. So by 1991, uh, our properties combined with the Charlotte Park System, which created the Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation Department. And the Division of Na uh, Nature Preserves and Natural Resources was actually born in 1993 after there was a, apparently it was a conservation initiative that was held at, I believe, uh, uh, at Lada Nature Preserve, which led to the purchase of Cowan's Wildlife Refuge, uh, Royal Hill Nature Preserve, and additional land uh, throughout the county. So, and with this uh, division starting off, the mission of it was to group, uh, other group would be to protect the area's biodiversity and natural uh, heritage for generations to come. So. Uh, this uh, so our I would say our division of my division of the county uh, park and recreation department still fairly new, um, still fairly young, but we're making headway out here. Uh, just to give you a perspective um, about in terms of the nature preserves around the county and in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area, um, although there's a lot there uh, in terms of actual acreage, uh, Charlotte actually has the least amount of land within a 25 mile radius than any other major metropolitan city in the southeast. So that's the reason why my uh, division of Park and Rec was created is to expand on that and create more nature preserves so we can all have fun um, in the outdoors. Now, this may be a little bit hard to see, but this is actually the current of nature preserves around the county. There's actually about 27 nature preserves. And as you can see, if I can pull my mouse around here, majority of the nature preserves are actually in the northwest corner of the county. Um, you do have some uh, scattered about in the northeast and then uh, my nature preserve is right down here at Stevens Creek, which is on the far east side in Mint Hill. And then you have a few nature preserves uh, on the southwest and then directly south uh, of 485 as well. And just to put in perspective of how many people visit our parks, um, in last just last year, we had about 1.2 million uh, visitors annually, which to put in perspective to some of the uh, national parks around the country, I believe Yosemite National Park had three plus million. So I think we're doing a pretty decent job. I mean, yes, we're lower than Yosemite, but at the same time, we're, I mean, 1.2 million, that is nothing to snooze at. So I think we're doing an excellent job uh, in terms of uh, advertising our nature preserves and having individuals come out and truly, I would say, just truly immerse themselves within uh, our nature preserves around the county. So, in terms of the 
is a nature preserve, so I, I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> but uh, as Mrs. Donna Ball stated, as I stated earlier, I am an environmental educator at Stevens Creek Nature Preserve, which is one of the newest nature preserves here in the county. It's actually located in about 281 acres of land, and we have a, roughly about three miles of trails. Um, now, you, three miles may be sm, uh, small or maybe less compared to some of the other nature preserves that have nature centers on their property, but we have a unique, um, unique uh, trail system. Uh, it's divided up with one extended trail that goes from the parking lot all the way out to Hooks Road, uh, and that's called the Hill, Hill, Hill Splitter Trail, excuse me. And both of these loops are were named after uh, certain things that were found on the property, uh, either beforehand or after the after the fact that um, Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation purchased the property. So the first loop is actually classified as uh, actually named as a sawmill loop, which uh, apparently, according to the local residents, we actually used to have, it was believed that we used to have a sawmill on the property. And then the second loop is named Quartz Loop. And there, there's a reason why. There are very large uh, quartz um, structures on the property. I think the largest structure itself, uh, it's hard to give, it, hard to describe in dimensions, but if you can see um, the diameter of my hands, is about this big, it's really large. But anyway, um, I believe Stevens Creek Nature Center is very unique in a way because of our state-of-the-art uh, visitor center, which is about 12,000 square feet. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Charlotte Wildlife Stewards March program, uh, which is Nature Preserves of Mecklenburg County. Uh, we've got a few housekeeping items to start off with. So uh, to start with, please place your phones on mute and type any questions you may have in the chat or raise your hand and they will be addressed before the end of the evening. Um, slide two. Um, I want to start off with who we are. We are the Charlotte Wildlife Stewards and we're a local chapter of the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. We're one of 19 local chapters across the, straight, across the state and our mission is to create, preserve, and protect wildlife through education, engagement, and enjoyment. We have an all-volunteer leadership team made up of myself, Margaret Sexton as president, Ernie McLaney is, is past president, Donna Bowles is vice president, Eric Mick is a treasurer, Caroline Brenniger is a secretary, with Amanda Carlisle, Donya Holly, Clyde Kaiser, Connie Harris, and Sandy Dixon, all serving as board members at large. Next. Do you know that the city of Charlotte has 1,385 certified wildlife habitats and that 128 of them was added just last year? Do you know that you only need five items to certify your property as a habitat by the National Wildlife Federation? You only have to provide, supply food, which can be native plants or trees, which provide food, and you can supplement it with feeders. You, can, you need to have water. All living things need water, and it can be supplied either nationally, either by stream, pond, or lake, or by fountain or birdbath. Uh, you need to have shelter, which is uh, can be provided by having native plants, trees, and can be supplemented with brush piles or, or houses. Um, you need a place to raise young, which again could be native plants or trees and can be supplemented with houses. Uh, you need to practice sustainable landscape practices, uh, which such as you know having a rain barrel, uh, planting native plants, composting, or, in, or eliminating invasive species. So next. You can become involved by volunteering at an event, participating in our events and contests, or joining our chapter via the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. You can assist in one of the chapter committees, such as communications, education, events, programs, finance, or marketing. 
Um, you can get involved and served on our leadership board. You can donate to our chapter, which is a, a 5013C entity. Or you could become a corporate sponsor. Or you can do any or all of those. Next. By joining the Charlotte Wildlife Storage, you get a monthly uh, North Carolina Wildlife Federation newsletter called the Wildlife Wire. You get a quarterly NCWF journal called Wild Lives, Wild Places. You get access to members only events, which we have three to four a year. You get to network with other nature lovers from uh, across the state and especially Mecklenburg County. And you get bragging rights. Uh, most recently, we've won chapter of the year and proud partner of the canopy. Next. We want to thank our current sponsors, Wild Birds Unlimited and Honey Bee Realty. Without their financial support, we wouldn't be able to host some of the events and programs that we do. And next. Our current upcoming events include I Spy, uh, Insects in Winter, which is an ongoing virtual event. And we have a contest for the month of March. And if you practice, if you go to that link, uh, you will get to see the uh, program. And we also have a group read, The Nature of Nature. And uh, we're encouraging people to read or post their thoughts about the book on our Facebook or uh, or any of our other social media accounts. Um, our April program, which will be the second uh, Tuesday of April, uh, is Pollinator Gardening in the Piedmont. We hope to have you join us for that. We're also going to have a silent auction in April. Uh, right now it's scheduled for the 16th through the 25th. And if you'll stay tuned on our social media pages, you'll have more details. Currently, we have several items ranging from a zigzag puzzle up to a, a three night stay in Bryson City. So put that on your calendar. Uh, and then uh, in June, uh, right now it's um, June 12th through the 20th, we're scheduling a Wild on the Water, Wild in the Woods fundraiser. Um, and we, again, stay tuned on our social media pages for more details about that. We're still in the planning stages. So next. Now our vice president, Donna Bowles, is going to introduce our speaker and program for the evening. So Donna, take it away. Hey, so we're going to learn all about these treasures that we have in Mecklenburg County. Uh, Matthew Morgan is an environmental educator with Mecklenburg Car County Parks and Rec. He was a city kid growing up in Atlanta, but has always been fascinated with nature and wildlife. He loved watching nature documentaries as well as shows and, and uh, movies about animals. So he and I are kindred spirits here. After graduating with a degree in biology from Maryville College, Matthew volunteered at the Atlanta Aquarium, worked at Zoo Atlanta and the Tennessee Aquarium. He's passionate about wildlife and conservation and loves his job educating visitors at Stevens Creek Nature Preserve. Um, I want to add that I met Matthew back in October of 2019 at our last Kids in Nature Day event. Um, he, he was there representing Stevens Creek Nature Preserve, and I was just so impressed by his knowledge, his enthusiasm, um, the way he connected with the kids and the adults, and we are just tickled that he's going to be sharing with us tonight. Okay, Matthew, it's you. Well, thank you, Donna, and thank you, everyone, for coming out and attending this program tonight. I hope, I pray that I provide enough information for you guys to uh, to take with you and to explore these nature preserves around the county because, I mean, I will say this week probably is the best time to go out because it's such beautiful weather outside. Uh, here today. I mean, yesterday was great. Today's great. I think it's all the way great to Saturday evening. So if you do not take your opportunities and chances to enjoy the nature preserves around the county, I'm going to come and find you. Yes. 
yes, I will come to find you. I have a special set of skills. No, I'm just playing. I don't have a special set of skills like that. I'm not like Liam Nielsen from uh, the movie Taken. I'm not like that at all. Not like that. Uh, with that being said, thank you again uh, for Charlotte Wildlife Stewards. Um, Mrs. Donna Bull, thank you. Margaret Sexton, th thank you. Uh, to North Carolina Wildlife Federation, Tara Moore, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is an honor and a privilege to present this information to you all. Um, just gonna focus on quite a few nature preserves, as I stated earlier around the county, because there are a lot, but I'm gonna focus on more the accessible ones. Um, there are certain ones that are uh, certainly uh, well underdeveloped and they're just utilized for more of just natural habitat. And so I'm gonna focus on the ones that we can visit and we can enjoy our time in, our, uh, in nature. So if you're ready, if you can give me a thumbs up or you know, just a high five or all righty then. There we go, there we go. I see it now, I see it, I see it. Well, let me share my screen. All righty then. Hope everybody can see. So like I said, thank you again. And let's get this ball on the road, all right? So I am an environmental educator, as Ms. Mrs. Donna Bowles stated, uh, at Stevens Creek Nature Center and Preserve. And I'm a part of the Division of Natural uh, Nature Preserves and Natural Resources. And so our theme is to protect the regions, the biodiversity, and natural heritage for I mean, it's a inherent value for the benefit of future generations by promoting open space preservation, conserving natural communities, and fostering awareness and stewardship through environmental education and outdoor recreation. And our vision is to have natural communities exist within Mecklenburg County and perpetuity for these interconnected, high quality natural areas to benefit and be valued by all citizens. Yes, notice a lot of words, but in, in and pretty much to sum it down, it is my job to inform everyone about the unique things about our natural area uh, through the use of environmental education and hopefully foster positive attitudes so you can make informed decisions about wildlife and conservation and the natural world in general. So well, uh, part of this presentation, I'm going to dive in into a little bit of the history of the nature preserves here in the county because I don't think a lot of people know about the history around here. So I just want to dive in into that aspect first, okay? Uh, in terms of the history of the nature preserves and natural resources, so if you ever been to any other parks around the county, our very first park actually was McDowell Nature Preserve or what it was called McDowell Park which I believe was uh, purchased in 1975. And by 1981, we had three parks here in the county, which were McDowell, a uh, lot of nature plantation park and preserve, and McAlpine. Uh, and just a side note for everyone, that picture to, uh, on your screen is actually a, a picture taken from, a, from me at McAlpine. I'm a particular birder. I love to go bird watching, and McAlpine is a great uh, park to go bird watching. But um, back to the history. So by 1991, uh, our properties combined with the Charlotte Park System, which created the Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation Department. And the Division of Na uh, Nature Preserves and Natural Resources was actually born in 1993 after there was a, apparently it was a conservation initiative that was held at, I believe, uh, uh, at Lada Nature Preserve, which led to the purchase of Cowan's Wildlife Refuge, uh, Royal Hill Nature Preserve, and additional land um, throughout the county. So, and with this uh, division, starting off, the mission of it was to group, uh, of the group would be to protect the area's biodiversity and natural uh, heritage for generations to come. So um, this, uh, so our, I would say our division of, my division of the county uh, park and recreation department, still fairly new, um, still fairly young, but we're making headway out here. Uh, just to give you a perspective um, about in terms of the nature preserves around the county and the Charlotte-Mecklenburg area, um, although there's a lot, 
there uh, in terms of actual acreage, uh, Charlotte actually has the least amount of land within a 25 mile radius than any other major metropolitan city in the southeast. So that's the reason why my uh, division of Park and Rec was created is to expand on that and create more nature preserves so all, we can all have fun uh, in the outdoors. Now, this may be a little bit hard to see, but this is actually the current of nature preserves around the county. There's actually about 27 nature preserves. And as you can see, if I can pull my mouse around here, majority of the nature preserves are actually in the north west corner of the county. Um, you do have some uh, scattered about in the northeast and then uh, my nature preserve is right down here at Stevens Creek, which is on the far east side in Mint Hill. And then you have a few nature preserves uh, on the southwest and then directly south uh, of 485 as well. And just to put in perspective of how many people visit our parks, um, in last just last year, we had about 1.2 million uh, visitors annually, which to put in perspective to some of the uh, national parks around the country, I believe Yosemite National Park had three plus million. So I think we're doing a pretty decent job. I mean, yes, we're lower than Yosemite, but at the same time, we're, I mean, 1.2 million, that is nothing to snooze at. So I think we're doing an excellent job uh, in terms of uh advertising our nature preserves and having individuals come out and truly i would say just truly immerse themselves within uh our nature preserves around the county so in terms of nature preserves I, i'm a little bit biased <laughs> but uh as mrs donna ball uh, stated as i stated earlier i am environmental educator at stevens creek nature preserve which is one of the newest nature preserves here in the county it's actually located in about 281 acres of land and we have a roughly about three miles of trails um now you, three miles may be sm uh small or maybe less compared to some of the other nature preserves that have nature centers on their property but we have a unique um unique uh trail system uh it's divided up with one extended trail that goes from the parking lot all the way out to hooks road uh and that's called the hill 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 splitter trail excuse me and both of these loops are were named after uh certain things that were found on the property uh either beforehand or after the after the fact that um, Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation purchased the property. So the first loop is actually classified as, uh, actually named as a uh, sawmill loop, which uh, apparently according to the local residents, we actually used to, it was believed that we used to have a sawmill on the property. And then the second loop is named quartz loop. And there, there's a reason why. There are very large uh, quartz um structures on the property i think the largest structure itself uh it's hard to give it hard to describe in dimensions but if you can see um the diameter of my hands is about this big it's really large but anyway um i believe stevens creek nature center is very unique in a way because of our state-of-the-art uh, visitor center which is about twelve thousand square feet theme of our nature center is life in the watershed hangs in a balance and that the reason why Stevens Creek was actually created is due to a unique muscle called the Carolina Hill Splitter, which is actually federally endangered. Um, and it only has about four to six populations within uh, the watershed that Stevens Creek is located in, which I believe is the Rocky River watershed, which if you dive a little bit deeper into that watershed, we are located in the Goose Creek River Basin. And the Carolina Hill Splitter, uh, just like many other mussels, um, is a bioindicator. And you're probably wondering, well, what does bioindicator mean? Uh, basically, in a nutshell, um, it, mussels uh, are, are bi when I say bioindicators, they indicate if makes sure they're pretty much <laughs> organisms that um, 
that determine the health of the stream or water source that they're in, in a nutshell. But I don't think I could do my nature center as just as, as this video link that I have to it, um, which hopefully should work. <laughs> Stevens Creek Nature Preserve is the first Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation Facility here in Mint Hill. To be able to access a whole new part of Charlotte, a whole new group of people that have never had a nature center right in their backyard is really, really exciting. So to have a large facility like this that really is kept as natural as it can be really helps keep that rural flavor. And we wanna make sure that it's here for people to respect, to enjoy. This nature center is really very inclusive to kids and adults. Anybody that wants to come here, we're gonna have a program for you or just wonderful interaction with maybe a live animal or one of our really great exhibits. Outside, the main feature of the property is the restored stream and there will be a fully accessible trail. And then beyond that, there are about three miles of trails that are really lovely to hike over. We really want folks to ultimately see this facility as their go-to place for just relaxing, being able to go out and walk, and just enjoy nature. To be able to provide recreation for the folks, you know, in the county and the towns is really, really critical. And Mecklenburg County Park and Rec can't do it alone. Mecklenburg County is really fortunate to have three other large nature preserves with nature centers already. So by us being here in Mint Hill, we've kind of closed off that fourth quarter and really filled a gap. So it's almost like you're visiting the animals and the plants home as opposed to being in a space that was created just for humans. The Stevens Creek Nature Center is really one of our flagship facilities and we hope that it'll be a focal point for environmental education, public recreation and community resource for all the residents here. Alrighty then. So that's just a sneak peek of what is to come at Stevens Creek Nature Center and Preserve. And give me one second while I reshare my screen. All right. Can you see my screen? All righty then. Perfect. And we're back. Thank you. All right, so that's just a just a sneak preview of Stevens Creek Nature Preserve and Center. Um, just a little extrapolation on some of the things that you saw in the within the video. Um, as there will be a stream display inside the actual nature center itself, which holds about 2,200 gallons of water. Um, there will be a lot of native fish within the very uh, two large tanks within that stream display. Uh, there will be a kin there's kinetic sand table for the children to uh, create their own watershed, create their own mountain range. And if they're tall enough and they can spread out their hands above the kinetic sand table, they can actually make it rain down on the on their terrain that they created. Uh, along with that, uh, uh, if you looked at the Throughout the video, there was a portion of a, a map of the Rocky River watershed, and it was actually done by a artist, a uh, local artist here in Charlotte, who created that map utilizing the clay from the creek itself and created all these different types of colors uh, from the creek to post on that map. So. It's really unique uh, nature center and preserve, and I hope you all um, will be ready for it um, as soon as we open, whenever that actually happens. Uh, we also will offer uh, a lot of unique outdoor recreation uh, activities at Stevens Creek Nature Center, uh, including archery, which a lot, uh, not many other nature centers around the county can actually do that. I think we are the only one that can actually do that. So. Be on the lookout for Stevens Creek Nature Center uh, opening up their doors. But in the meantime, uh, our trails are open to the general public. So if you would like to come out, feel free to come out. Um, since it's getting warmer, please, um, please, please explore these trails because it's a very unique landscape, uh, to say the least. All right. Uh, with that being said, 
I know I'm very biased about my Nature Center and Preserve, but we have all different types of unique Nature Center and Preserves around the county. So um, this next one up is Reedy Creek Nature Center and Preserve, which is probably the most uh, inner, inner um, probably the closest Nature Nature Center and Preserve uh, in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. It's right off Rocky River Road, and it's actually a park uh, mix is a park and a preserve. So it's about 120 something plus acres of park with disc golf um, opportunity as, as well as basketball courts and I believe a baseball field and a dog park. So if you have dogs, make your way over there. Um, but along with that, you have the Reedy Creek Nature, uh, Nature Preserve, which is about 830 plus acres. So in total, the park and the preserve is about 927 acres. And I will tell you, uh, it's very unique in terms of birding habitat. Um, matter of fact, I believe last year, or early part of this year, actually, we actually, uh, one of my coworkers spotted a Rufus hummingbird at their hummingbird feeder. Um, thank you to the National Wildlife Federation for certifying our, our backyard uh, our nature center at Reedy Creek as a backyard habitat garden because a lot of different animals come and utilize uh, our bird feeders and uh, our little pond at the nature center. Um, one unique aspect of the preserve itself is the Robinson Rock House Ruin, which is actually on the National Register of Historic Places. It's probably the farthest out uh, in terms of the trails. It's roughly about 10 miles of trails at Reedy Creek Nature Preserve, but tell you once you get to the uh, the, the rock house ruins, you're not going to regret it because it's very calming. It's very relaxing. It's, it's it's like you're fully immersed in a forest, but you still have an urban, uh, urban setting next door to you. But it's really cool. I found personally, I found unique wildlife uh, around that uh, ruins, including a residential black rat snake who inhabits the walls of the ruins. I think he just loves the uh, the availability of rodents around there. Uh, unique uh, unique rodents that allow him to fatten up and uh, be a ha happy and healthy rat snake. But along at the along with the Robinson Rock House ruins, we are also at Reedy Creek Nature Center is home to the uh, Biodiversity Center uh, Center for the Biodiversity Studies. Excuse me. Uh, Dr. James F. Matthews, who is actually the father of the director of Mecklenburg County um, Nature Preserves and Natural Resources, Chris Matthews, as well. Um, one unique event that always happens at Reedy Creek Nature Center and Preserve is annually we have a hummingbird festival, which usually occurs in August. Um, it's going to be virtual this year as it was last year, but hopefully in 2022. It will be in uh, in person, but be on the lookout for all the unique uh, online opportunities that the Hummingbird Festival will offer to you, uh, to you lovely individuals on the call. And I'm hoping, hoping that y'all will have a good time with that. All right. So next, one of my, I would say this, this is probably up there with uh, Stevens Creek in terms of my favorite nature preserves, but it's Latta Nature Preserve, formerly known as Latta Plantation, um, which is the largest preserve in the county. It has roughly about almost 1,500 acres um, with, on the property itself. Uh, Latta is actually situated at Mountain Island Lake, which was actually owned by Duke uh, Power for about 50 years until, until 19, the late 1970s, early 1980s, where the county park and recreation system actually purchased the property. And if you do not know, Mountain Island Lake is actually uh, it's a viable water source for the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. About roughly 700,000 residents between the Mecklenburg County and Gass Gaston counties actually get their drinking water from Mountain Island Lake. Love this preserve itself. It has about roughly about 16 miles of trails. Uh, not only hiking trails, but if you do like horseback riding, 
has horse horseback riding trails as well. So if you have some horses, bring bring them out to the Lotta Nature Preserve. I guarantee you won't regret it. Um, with that being said, uh, Lotta Nature Preserve and Lotta Nature Center has actually undergone a change recently. So just like how Stevens Creek was developed, uh, Lotta Nature Center has actually has actually moved from the original nature center to the larger facility, which is called Quest. And it's actually a partnership between uh, the Carolina Raptor Center and uh, Lada Nature Preserve itself. And the theme of, the, of our nature center at Lada is nothing survives without water. I'm gonna share the video that they have uh, to promote uh, the unique Quest facility. So. Give me one second and please be patient with me. Thank you all for coming out. Let me... Can you hear it now? Yes, we can. All right. We have a picture of a young man that I like to say that's the goal. And if you show this picture, his eyes are bugged out. It's amazing. It's that awe. We create these moments that people just be the aha moments, the wow moments, the I can't believe I just saw what I saw moments. We really just want to share it with people and let them see this awesome resource that we've built for the community. Quest is what we're calling this facility. We have the two organizations, Park and Recreation, as well as the Carolina Raptor Center. We really want to see Quest be a cornerstone of Mecklenburg County and that gateway to those outdoor experiences. We really tried to focus the exhibit hall on that theme of nothing survives without water. So when you come in, you'll see some cool live animal exhibits. Then our kind of cornerstone of that is our massive fish tank, which will have some really cool native fish here at the Raptor Center, which our new campus will be adjacent, they'll be able to experience 40 plus species of, of birds from around the world. We are the largest raptor hospital in the United States. The appeal of this piece of property and this building is really that connection to the outdoors. Mecklenburg is a very developed county, so to have these large nature preserves where you can come and wander for hours without seeing other people or development is a real luxury. We have over 16 miles of hiking trails, plus a huge amount of shoreline where you can put your kayak in the water, your paddle board, or just take a stroll. And by partnering with the Carolina Raptor Center, we're able to kind of fill in the gaps and really do a better job together. So our role really is to connect folks with the natural environment so they'll appreciate it, they'll understand it, they'll want to conserve it. Because All righty then, can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. All right, woo! So just like that video illustrated, it's gonna be a lot to offer at Quest um, I am truly excited about this partnership that we that we have in, in conjunction with the Carolina Raptor Center, simply because I'm a bird fanatic. Uh, I've been to the Carolina Raptor Center quite a few times, and if you have not visited, I am going to shame you because it is one of the premier um, premier facilities in the county because it highlights so many unique birds of prey from. Um, isle, owls to falcons to eagles. They do have a, a golden eagle there, actually, and bald eagles as well. So be on the lookout uh, for the Carolina Raptor Center and a lot of nature center at Quest. Um, ho hopefully, we will be open in the near future, hopefully in the summer. Along with that partnership, uh, a lot of nature preserve was actually um, formerly named as Ladder Plantation, and there's still the historic Ladder Plantation on property. I believe they are still doing uh, limited tours at the moment in time. So feel free to go to that facility because it's very informative. Um, that plantation was actually owned by James Latta family, which is actually where we got our nature preserve uh, name from. Um, in, uh, with, in addition to all those unique uh, organizations on the property. The property itself is simply gorgeous. Um, if you've ever been there, there's a particular prairie that we have there that, that has an abundance amount of wild 
uh, flowers and vegetation in general within the peri. Uh, one particular wildflower, and it's a <laughs> it's a tongue tw twister, but it's called the Schweinsnit sunflower, which is a unique sunflower to say the least that is actually endangered, as well as the Georgia aster, which is a, uh, a flower that's really has this really uh, beautiful purple. Um, so take a be on the look. Uh, be when you're going to a lot of nature preserve, go to the prairie because it's awesome. Uh, the preserve itself is big in terms of birding. Um, I know I go bird watching at the preserve is, uh, itself quite a few times uh, for myself um, from waterfowl such as you know your regular uh, mallards to unique uh, wading birds like great blue herons and snowy egrets and great egrets. So. As you can tell, I'm pretty enthusiastic about a lot of nature preserves, so <laughs> I just love that property. But the last of our nature preserves that actually have a nature center on property is McDowell Nature Preserves. And it's roughly it's roughly about 1100 plus 1100 plus acres. And as I stated earlier, it is the old, oldest park in Mecklenburg County. Um, it's the only preserve in the county that actually has a campground, uh, which you can reserve up to about 56 reservable campsites that range from some primitive sites to all the way up to RV hookups. Uh, also at McDowell Nature Preserve, you also have Copperhead Island, which is about roughly 14 to 20 acres. Uh, you can just camp there. Um, you can also go do kayak rentals there as well. So it's pretty unique uh, island itself. Um, one of my favorite things about McDowell Nature Preserve, though, is the beaver habitat there. So it has a un unique beaver habitat um, located not too far from the nature center. I will say probably less than a half a mile, probably a quarter of a mile from the nature center itself. Uh, have I seen beavers actually in the habitat? I may have seen signs of them, but I actually haven't seen an actual beaver there. But it's a unique, it's a unique habitat to say the least. Uh, a lot of wading birds, such as great blue herons, uh, occupied that area as well. So if uh, if you want to go see just what a beaver uh, beaver habitat uh, looks like, definitely go out to McDowell Nature Preserve. And McDowell Nature Preserve is the home to an abundant amount of actually threatened and endangered species of wildflower and vegetation. So along with the Georgia Aster, it's also home to the prairie dock, the checker white, and the smooth cone flower. Um, and one unique area that I love at McDowell Nature Preserve is the prairie itself, where you can find unique birds over there. Once again, I'm a birder. I know I'm going to highlight the birds there. Um, so be on the definitely visit McDowell Nature Preserve. You're on the southwest uh, part of the county. Uh, if you live out near Carowinds, definitely make your way over to McDowell Nature Preserve. Uh, if you look live in the Steel Creek area, definitely make your way. And if you're uh, on the other side of the border, Fort Mill and Rock Hill, McDowell Nature Preserve is the place that you should go. Uh, besides uh, all the unique um, wildlife there and vegetation there, we also offer unique uh, programming. So it's actually located on Lake Wiley, which is one of the three man-made lakes here uh, on the Catawba River chain, which is uh, Lake Wiley, Mountain Island Lake, and Lake Norman, which is the largest of the three. So like I said, go to the McDowell Nature Preserve. Check it out. Now, besides all the unique nature preserves that have nature centers on their property, there are abundance amount of nature preserves in general for the general public to access. As I said earlier, I'm a big bird watcher, so I'm going to highlight quite a few uh, nature preserves that are good for bird watching and wildlife viewing in, in general. Uh, one particular one is Cowan's Ford Wildlife Refuge which is just north of a lot of nature preserve. I will say in terms of driving, it probably take you no more than 10 to, 15, I wouldn't even say 10 to 15, probably 
five to ten minutes to actually get there. It's located on 850 acres uh, on a peninsula uh, near Catawba River and Mountain Lion Lake. And when I say it's a great burning habitat, it is. Um, it actually has a wildlife viewing area where you could go out and if you have particular wildlife viewing scopes or if you have binoculars, um, there's two ponds located on a property. One in, um, uh, one in particular usually has a, a unique bird called a belted kingfisher usually diving in and scooping up uh, the small fish in that pond. But also in the distance of Cowan's Four Wildlife Refuge on the power lines, there's actually uh, signs of ospreys nests, which are a, a fish loving uh, bird of prey. Um, they create these giant nests, I believe about five to six feet in diameter. It's uh, Cowan's Wildlife uh, Refuge is also home to uh, other unique birds of prey. If you are a fan of the bald eagle, Definitely go out to Cowan's Ford um, because you you do have opportunity to, to view bald eagle, bald eagles themselves. Um, but as I say on the PowerPoint, there's a little bit of limited access, so they, it doesn't have as many. It doesn't have trails, walking trails for um, for the general public itself. But you can walk up and down the uh, access road to the preserve where you can see all different wildlife. I know I have encountered quite a few turtles crossing the world road. And just a side note, if you see the turtle crossing the road, take them to that side. Don't bring them back to the other side because he's just going to turn around and go back to the direction that he was going to. Uh, also on the site itself is the Holly Bend site. Uh, which is actually on the National Registry of Historic Places. So very unique nature preserve to say the least. Um, so if you love wildlife viewing, definitely go on, go out to Cowboys for a wildlife refuge. All right. All right. Now, I know I talked to quite a few. Uh, I know I talked to Tara and Donna and Margaret um, before we started this presentation about Evergreen Nature Preserve. So. If you're located on the east side, well, east side of Charlotte, uh, near the Sheffield Park area, you do have a local nature preserve in your backyard, pretty much. So Evergreen Nature Preserves, roughly about 77 acres, and is bordered by th three unique uh, places. So um, at the entrance of the park, right across the street, is actually a middle school named East Way Middle School. Then you have a cemetery on one end of, uh, on another uh, end of the uh, the park itself. And then you also have, uh, I believe it's Winterfield Elementary, which is on the opposite side of the preserve itself. Uh, it has a lot of dense vegetation that provides a lot of cover for the local wildlife. Uh, if you go there, uh, there's definitely a chance that you will run into uh, um, barred owls uh, in the area. I definitely ran into, I believe, two of them uh, while I was walking in the preserve last year, and they were calling to each other, actually. Um, with that being said, this preserve is kind of unique itself because, unfortunately, um, due to non-management um, um, reasons, uh, we do have a, a steadily increase of non-native invasive plants unfortunately there so it's it's a unique nature preserve to say the least but it could be better um hopefully we can tackle those invasive plants so we can provide um uh, more uh, more to the local wildlife in that area all right with that being said the next one i wanted to talk about is west branch nature preserve and it's actually located, I believe, in the Davidson uh, area in the north part of Mecklenburg County. Uh, as stated on the PowerPoint itself, it's about 91 acres. But what is so unique about this preserve is that almost 90 to 95% of the Mecklenburg County amphibians have been found in this nature preserve alone because it has a lot of uh, a lot of wetland within the preserve itself. Um, on this particular picture right here, 
uh, you can find this particular species of salamander called the spotted salamander at this nature preserve, as, as well as the marble salamanders, which are quite large. They believe they can get up to about five to eight inches in length. They, they are quite large individuals. Um, also at that preserve, because of the, the reason why it has had a lot of wetlands is because of the fever activity that has been there since 1993. So this is another nature preserve for our beaver lovers in the house. If you would like to come out, go to West Branch because you could probably will see beaver activity um, around the wetlands themselves. Now there's only about one mile trail which was just recently created in 2012, but I guarantee you it is the place to be in terms of viewing uh, viewing beaver activity besides McDowell and amphibian uh, activity as well. Uh, for my birders in the house, definitely go up to West Branch because it provides a lot of habitat for waterfowl like northern pintails and mallards and godwalls and hooded mergansers. So definitely keep on the lookout. Um, definitely visit West Branch uh, Nature Preserve, all right? I know I'm, I can talk I'm so excited about presenting this information. Uh, I love these nature preserves because been to practically majority, if not all of them, that I will present um, in tonight's presentation. Um, another unique nature preserve, which is located not too far um, from Uptown, actually. Uh, I would say it's about 15 minutes from Uptown itself, but it's Riverwalk Nature Preserve. Um, Ribbon walk, like I said, big birder. So uh, it's it's a birdie hot spot. It has roughly about two different uh, ponds on the property, and the trail system is kind of more like in a circle, in a loop. And is the reason for it being named Ribbon Walk is how it ribbon, how the trails ribbon through the forest itself. Um, it's a very unique nature preserve because you feel like you're definitely not in nature. I mean, you feel like you're in nature, but then you get to the opposite side of the nature preserve and then you see a little bit of uh, housing development. But um, once again, great nature preserve for birding uh, uh, in general. Uh, it provides a lot of habitat for migrants themselves. So uh, I personally love Rimmel Walk. Um, I've been there probably like two or three times within the last year, just exploring the trails there. Um, it's just a unique nature preserve to say the least. So if you have any questions about Riverwalk, feel free to ask me uh, after this presentation uh, as I make my way along. Um, also, great nature preserve uh, in our county, which is on the north side of town, not too uh, far from Lada, probably about 20 minutes from, 15, 20 minutes from Lada Nature Preserve, and it's located really close to the university area, as well as the Mallet Creek area. And it's Clark's Creek Nature Preserve, which I believe was, just was um, created within the last three, four years, I believe 2018, 2017 or 2018. And it's in conjunction with the Clark's Creek Community Park where there's pickleball courts. There's basketball courts as well as playgrounds, but I'm not here to talk to you about just the community parts. I'm here to talk to you about the nature preserve. So this nature preserve is about 109 acres. And what is so unique about it is that it is protected habitat for the grass, for unique wildlife on the property. Um, as I stated, as I stated in the PowerPoint, grasshopper sparrow and the Eastern meadowlark. But also there's a pond on, on, on the property itself where you can see uh, unique turtle species such as yellow belly sliders, as well as uh, there is a common snapping turtle in that, in, in that pond as well. And there's actually a chimney roost, which uh, where chimney swifts actually go to roost in at night. Um, However, I have not seen too much activity going on in that roost for quite some time. But uh, if you're in the mood for bird watching or um, looking at the unique uh, wildflowers there, feel free to go out to Clark's Creek Nature Preserve. This photo was actually taken by me uh, on the preserve actually last spring. 
Uh, as you can see, it's very, very um, pretty. And then right near the nature, uh, right near the pond itself, it actually has uh, quite a few um, unique uh, crayfish burrows where you can see a, a whole lot of crayfish digging up their homes and whatnot. So uh, if you live in the Mallet Creek area or you're near University area, please feel free to visit Clark's Creek Nature Preserve. I guarantee you won't. Um, you, you definitely won't. Uh, how can I say? You, it won't fail. It, it won't fail you. I'll tell you that right now. And this is just two pictures of the protected species at, at the preserve: the meadow lark, which will be on your left, and the grasshopper sparrow, which will be on your right. Um, a one nature preserve that I'm not that knowledgeable about. I have not been to, unfortunately. It's it's what nature preserve, which is on the west side of town. Um, actually, it's what means the people of the river. It's actually a natural heritage site uh, and was was once part of the Catawba Nation. Um, this particular nature preserve acts as a uh, habitat for a lot of wetland species, um, definitely for waterfowl as well. So. Uh, like I said, I'm not very much knowledgeable about is what Bibles have to say is definitely a nature preserve that you should go out and visit. Uh, it's, a, it's also a nature preserve that has endangered species of wildflower. This picture right here is actually the picture of the Georgia aster, as I stated in um, previous slides uh, in this presentation. So uh, if you like pretty flowers, definitely go out to the is what nature preserve uh, to view the Georgia Aster. Um, one of the formerly known as Stephens Road Nature Preserve, now called the Buckeye Cove Nature Preserve. Uh, the reason why we renamed this particular preserve is because of the creation of my nature preserve, Stevens Creek. And so we were trying to create uh, a unique, unique name um, for this preserve. And one thing that stuck out to some of the people in park and recreation was that it was in the cove itself. And then there's a lot of Buckeyes uh, within the area. So naturally they just decided to call it Buckeye Cove Nature Preserve. Uh, this is not look, this is also located on the Northwest part of town. As I showed you in the earlier part of my presentation, a lot of our nature preserves are located in that part of the charlotte mecklenburg area but it's about 394 acres located on um near the catawba river and once again another nature preserve that has extensive marsh and wetlands for all the unique habitat uh, for the native wildlife uh in the area itself and i hope i'm not moving too fast for anybody but like i said at the end of the presentation feel free to ask me uh, your questions. Uh, one cool preserve that I've been to recently is actually Big Rock Nature Preserve. The uh, reason why it's called that is because it has this large granite rock formation in the heart of the park itself. It's actually located near on the south side of town near, I believe, the Ballantyne area. And this rock formation is actually the largest in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. It's a relatively small nature preserve at 22 acres, but it has a lot to offer. If you ever just, if you're in this area, if you ever just wanna take, uh, take your family and friends to sit on top of the rocks, feel free to do so, because it's very relaxing. Uh, and also has a little small creek that runs next to it as well. So Big Rock Nature Preserve, definitely uh, also a, fan favorite of mine uh, as nature preserves in regards to nature preserves. Um, and this one I also visited recently is called the Flat Branch uh, Nature Preserve, which is actually right across the street from Flat Branch Community School. It's roughly about just under a mile of trails itself. Um, in the picture, it talks about how this is one of the last Habitats of upland depression swamp forest, which provides habitat for many native amphibians, such as the spotted salamander and the upland coarse frogs and other frog species as well. 
Um, this is probably one of the newest along with Stevens Creek Nature Preserve. It opened in late of 20, 2019. And one unique aspect about this preserve, it has its own little mini stone hedge uh, at the very, close to the very end of the about one mile loop of trail that it has. So if you're ever in the mood to just run or take your dog uh, for a walk or have the kids uh, just walk around outside, definitely visit Flat Branch uh, Nature Preserve. All right. Now, I've been talking about all the different nature preserves within the county itself, but I also want to tackle quite a few of the conservation practices and projects that we have going on in order to sustain roughly 7,600 acres of land that we have here in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. Um, I'm very passionate about conservation as Donna pointed out in, my, in her introduction. So I would like to talk to you about uh, some of our conservation projects. Uh, starting off with the uh, deer hunting. So here in, um, in Mecklenburg County, our main conservation issues that we have is managing and relating in terms of wildlife is uh, white-tailed deer populations. Um, because here, in, I mean, if you think about it, here in the eastern part of the United States, we have unfortunately eliminated a lot of large uh, predators that usually eat on um, deer, white-tailed deer. So they have a negative impact depending on how large their population is in a given area within uh, at a nature preserve. So this picture is actually displayed on your screen. It's talking about illustrating the browse line. And browse line is essentially the line that the deer can reach uh, in order to access and, and consume uh, the vegetation. And if you've ever been in a very heavily populated area, you will see that at a certain line, the browse line itself, uh, the vegetation is, is completely clear. And so for, uh, for in order for us to manage the deer populations around the county, um, we have dec decided to do deer hunting, which has been running for the last 10 years. If you're a deer hunter uh, in the audience, you definitely, if, if you want to be a part of this program, you definitely will have to have a license to hunt, but it usually starts on November 1st, and uh, it's usually held at three of the nature preserves around the county, Cowan's Wildlife Refuge, Loudoun Nature Preserve, and McDowell Nature Preserve. And we usually close the, these preserves um, during this time to avoid, obviously, uh, any injury to human life. Um, but since we've been doing this, actually, um, deer, in terms of the actual deer populations, as I've been told, the Natural Resources Division have seen a remarkable difference um, within the deer health, the body score, and the population around the county itself. Uh, but that's not the only conservation practice that we do here. Um, another conservation practice, and this uh, unique animal on my screen is actually the state reptile in North Carolina, Eastern Box Turtle, and that is, that's one of Stevens Creek ambassador animals named Freedom. But the natural resources decided to do what is wanting uh, was starting up a conservation project with the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission uh, at the uh, Iswa and Buckeye Cove Nature Preserves. And in a nutshell, it's pretty much collecting telemetry data on eastern box turtles themselves. And we're using uh, volunteer help from local college students to uh, study this. Um, if you do not, if you're not aware, although the box turtle, eastern box turtle is the state reptile of North Carolina, unfortunately has faced a continued uh, habitat loss. And our, our preserves around the county provide a lot of habitat uh, for them. So when we, uh, we want, what we're trying to do is have the telemetry data uh, as well as mark recapture um, to help monitor their populations around the county. So hopefully we uh, we uh, that their populations don't decline because this is an actual priority species for us here in Mecklenburg County. Um, other unique conservation projects uh, going on in the county. 
uh, you're a fan of earthworms, you might be upset about that. Now, I know the benefits of earthworms is they're major decomposers and they recycle nutrients. That's great for native earthworms, but unfortunately here in the county uh, and um, many other places, we have invasive earthworm problem, actually. <laughs> so uh, because these invasive earthworms create a more moist environment, uh, it actually inhibits us, at, um, inhibits our natural resource division, division to conduct prescribed fires um, from moving across the ground, which that is our next conservation project that I will be just mentioned, just talk about. Uh, we do, we are the only division in Mecklenburg County to do prescribed fires. Uh, we do roughly about 20 birds a year, over 750 to 900 acres. Obviously, it's weather dependent and it has occurred over the last 10 years. Now, you may wonder why. Uh, why do we do prescribed fire burns? Uh, is it fire bad? You probably think about um, some of the out of control wildfires uh, out in the West or even internationally out in Australia. Fire is actually a very good conservation method in order to promote growth uh, within a particular plant life, like the wildflower that I mentioned er earlier, the tongue twister, the Schweinschnitz sunflower, actually depends on prescribed fire to grow. And prescribed fire actually um, is a good way to eliminate invasive species. A lot of invasive species do not know how to handle uh, fires uh, in their habitat. So this is a great conservation project pro project that our natural resources division um, does every year. Uh, currently, they are doing some more burns and they should be doing some more burns um, here throughout the month of March. I know they do burns at Cowan's Wildlife Refuge. I know they do it at a lot of nature preserves, McDowell, among many other nature preserves around the county as well. So. Definitely a good conservation uh, method, is, uh, as I said earlier. And last, but certainly not least, most of us, uh, we know of or have heard of invasive plants. And that's one of our, uh, that's one of our natural resources, major conservation projects here in the county. And a lot of the budget, a lot of uh, funds go into, uh, uh, goes into plant uh, invasive plant removal. And this is all about restoring our habitats around the county. And if you ever seen invasive species like kudzu and periwinkle and wisteria and English ivy, although they can be very pretty and very beautiful when they bloom, uh, unfortunately, they are detrimental to the native wildlife and plant life. And so it is our job, especially natural resources, to remove that. Um, our different ways of removal will be obviously pulling and cutting, herbicide application, or a combination of both. Uh, our particular two that we target the most here in the county are autumn olive and kudzu vine. So it's, it's these uh, invasive plants are detrimental to the habitats that we have around the county. Uh, so it is up to our natural resources as well as myself and other individuals in the county to eliminate the uh, invasive plants. But uh, I am currently, uh, excuse me, uh, with that being said, uh, I hope that you learned a little bit of something. I know this could be a little bit uh, of worthy, but I hope you learned something about some of the nature preserves around the county. Um, definitely look forward to uh, uh, take advantage of going outside this weekend or this week in general, uh, considering the beautiful weather that we've been having. I know old man winter is actually gone now, hopefully. And so definitely come out to Stevens Creek Nature Preserve. Definitely come out to any other nature preserves like McDowell, Lada, Cowan's Ford, Wildlife Refuge, Buckeye Cove, Iswa. Uh, if you're a, a biker, uh, if you like mountain biking, go to Sherman Branch Biking Nature Preserve as well. So I uh, hope I uh, informed you all about the unique nature preserves and conservation um, 
projects that we have in the county. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit the chat. A couple things, and then I'm going to let you open it up for the questions, Tara, because I, I see several people with their hands up. But uh, Matthew mentioned um, the kayaking and then at some of the centers as, as well as the Raptor Center. I just want people to know that some of our members only events have been kayaking at LATA and also back uh, behind the scene tour at the Raptor Center. So those have been kind of put on hold for right now because of COVID, but those are some things. And then I wanted to also, he talked about the prescribed burns. One of our uh, officers, Carolyn, is actually uh, works at Reedy Creek and she is not at the meeting tonight because she did the prescribed burn <laughs> at uh, Buckeye Co today. So she didn't make it back in time for the meeting. So now I'll let um, that open it up for the meeting or for the questions. Yeah, thanks. And I just wanted to say I learned so much. I took a full page of notes and I've been living here for three and a half years now. And I realized that there are a whole bunch of sites that I have not been to. So thank you, Matthew. That was super helpful. Um, if anyone wants to put questions, you can put them in the chat. If you can't put them in the chat, you can raise your hand. So we'll, we'll start with Donna. Um, well, um, I want to say I've lived here for 44 years and I learned a lot about the nature preserves. <laughs> So um, I'm just tickled that we have these wild places in, in Mecklenburg County. Um, so I have two questions. The first is um, you mentioned that at Evergreen, there are a lot of invasives there. Um, when, if and when um, there's an, a, um, a project to go in and remove those invasives, do you ever get uh, volunteers from the public to do that? Yes, yes. So I'm actually, uh, at my nature preserve, um, I know one of our natural resource coordinators, Zuri Carter, is actually in the process of, of actually putting an event together to get volunteers to go help out at Evergreen Nature Preserve. But like I said through, in the presentation itself, it's quite extensive over there. It's 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 a jungle out there. Yeah. But um, definitely, we would definitely get um, volunteers for the general public. Absolutely. Now how how does she look for those? Does she go on social media? She will. So uh, we have our volunteer coordinator for Park and Rec Department. Uh, her name is Karen Howard, and she usually sends out a listserv uh, to local volunteers uh, asking for help uh, in terms of anything. I know we just did uh, at Stevens Creek, we just did a volunteer event um, planting our half of our living wall uh, at the okay. for, at the Nature Center. And yes, people, we do have a living wall full of, can, with a lot of perennials. Yay. Can you send me her email? Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, we could get on her list, sir. OK. And my, my next question is about um, you talked a lot about birds and you mentioned um, beavers and turtles. What are what other animals you know that we have all this natural area so part of the point is to have wildlife in it so what what are the prevalent wildlife species that we have living in our city Ooh, great question and i am so glad that you asked that because i am a i am an animal nerd just like everybody else i am an Me animal too. nerd um oh where do i start well we'll start with um probably the most common one that you'll find across the nature preserves white-tailed deer you'll see them everywhere um be on the lookout i was just at flat flat branch today and literally within three to five feet donna i saw two white-tailed deer just staring at me i'm like hey i'm not gonna hurt you i just want to take your picture that's it um we also have obviously coyotes uh, don't be if don't be concerned about coyotes. They are definitely an important uh, wildlife species here in the county. Uh, we also have bob. Uh, we do have very few bobcats around here. We also have uh, river otters. Uh, I think the last recorded in, uh, recorded sighting of a river otter was, I believe, in 2020. I think it's late February, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
besides beavers. What else? Squirrels, if you're a squirrel fan like myself, East and Gray squirrels, obviously. Um, definitely my purse, one of my personal favorites, because I've had the opportunity to work with this particular species before, the Virginia opossum. The opossum itself. And if you give me any type of negative feedback about opossums, I'm going to talk to you. Because <laughs> opossums in general are very uh, beneficial to us. If you're, if you do not know, uh, opossums are actually North America's only marsupial, and one single opossum can actually eat upwards to about five thousand ticks per summer. Just saying. Uh, possums, skunks, coyotes, um, red fox, and the gray fox. Um, depending on the time of the year and depending on the part of the county, you can see signs of black bears, but that's usually on the north side of the county. I know a lot of nature preserve last year actually discover a bear print uh, on the on the on the preserve property. So uh, depending on the time of the year. Uh, other than that, snakes as usual. Uh, big snake fan here. Um, black rat snakes, corn snakes, uh, racers. Whew. What else? Snakes in general. <laughs> Copperheads are usually the most common uh, venomous snake species, but they're usually gone before you even see them. And if you do see them, they're pretty much camouflage as well. Um, I think that that and all the amphibians in the uh, within the city limits. Green frogs, bullfrogs, chorus frogs, uh, all different types of salamander species. I mean, Donna, I can go on for 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 a minute. <laughs> we'll stop right here. Okay, thank you. That was a great answer, Matthew. I couldn't have done it better myself. Um, great, great job. Um, and I did see Kristen Grubert's hand next, so I just wanted to give her the chance, and then we'll move to Pat. Um, and if anyone does want to raise their their hand it's in the top right hand corner of your screen and it looks like a little hand symbol so if you can't find that top right corner so go ahead Kristen hi Matthew um great job um I moved down here seven years ago from New York and um you know this was I I've seen some of these with the Native Plant Society and stuff like that but uh, not a lot of them so that that was awesome um I do have a quick question with with regard to the invasives is the county doing anything to deal with the fact that there are still nurseries selling invasives around mm -hmm. here? I mean, you can still buy ligastrum and you know privets and um, honeysuckle and all that kind of stuff. Is, is anyone trying to do anything about that? Do you know? That I'm not fully aware uh, of, but I can definitely uh, ask any of my natural resource uh, colleagues if they're doing anything about about that. So if you provide your email, I can definitely get back to you on, about that answer, Kristen. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, I'll send, I, I'm not sure how to do that. But I'll get I'll, your email over to him, Kristen. Okay, thanks a lot, Tara. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> thanks, um, great and, uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And Pat, if you had a question. Oh, I think you're on mute, Pat. Okay, uh, I didn't have a question as much as I wanted to say thank you for this fabulous presentation. We just moved here from Hampton, Virginia um, in October, and I am grateful to see Donna again because I had a lengthy conversation with Donna and Wild Birds and she gave me a lot of information. And this is kind of pulling it all together. Um, I'm very committed to joining whatever organization is a member, so please let me know which ones I should join. Um, as a new resident of, we're in Union County, but we're just across the county line. Um, I'm fascinated to, to learn about all of these preserve areas quite by chance. We discovered, my dog and I discovered um, Stevens Creek. I thought it was fabulous. I was so excited that um, it was an area where there were no bikes, so it was just people and dogs and families and dogs, and I felt exceedingly safe because I saw lots of women walking by themselves with their dogs. Um, I can't say enough. It's um, in the age of COVID to be able to get out and take long, awesome walks. 
uh, has been very therapeutic. Um, I'm in for joining all the organizations, the wildlife <laughs> stewards, um, Parks and Recs. My uncle was director of park and planning in Montgomery County, Maryland, um, many years ago. So I know the benefit of preserving and um, maintaining parkland. So sign me up. I'm Sign me up. I'm in. Thank Mark, you. This Pat, was I'll, awesome. I'll get your information. Okay. Thank you. And just to let you know, Pat, um, in terms of like the bikes and things of that nature, RVs, four wheelers, any type of uh, vehicles or uh, vehicles that have wheels on them, they are not prohibited on nature preserve uh, sites. So if you do see them, definitely give, uh, uh, well, definitely give us a call. Definitely uh, mention to us because uh, we're uh, a lot of our nature preserves are just solely foot traffic. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to do that, then they could do it in their backyard or they can do it at Sherman Branch Nature Preserve, which is particularly geared towards mountain biking itself. Mm -hmm. Or They're, they could do it on the streets. My husband and I are um, avid bikers, but we haven't found safe places to bike down here on the road. They had a huge bicycling club in Hampton and people always gave the bikers most of the time the right away. So we we're missing that piece of it, but I'm also grateful to have safe places to be able to walk with the dog and it, I'm just impressed. Thank you. This is such a wonderful service. I'm very impressed. Thank you. It, from an outsider's perspective, perspective. I did never have this in Northern Virginia, nor did we have it in Hampton, Virginia. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we are excited to have you here, Pat. Thanks for moving here. That's, <laughs> that's wonderful. I'm in. <laughs> um, and I just had one, one question. I didn't see any more questions, but feel free to go ahead and raise your hands. But as an avid bird watcher, is there a bird that you know exists in Mecklenburg County that you have not yet seen in Mecklenburg County? Ooh, tough one, yeah. That is a tough one, wow. If oh. you don't have an answer, then you can just list your favorite species that you've seen in Mecklenburg County and that, okay. that will do. I will go with the latter, I'm gonna go with the latter. <laughs> so uh, uh, I know one of our natural resource coordinators actually developed a book called Birds of Mecklenburg County. That's by Don Seraf, uh, which gives a whole full life history of majority of the birds that are actually found in um, history and all the recorded uh, sightings of these birds. With that being said, in terms of birds being found in the county that I've seen that have been personal favorites, you know, 2020, as we all know, have was an extremely unique year, to say the least. And that holds true to the birds that we saw here in the Mecklenburg County area. So uh, I saw ooh, in the Coswall area, not too far from the Publix in the Coswall area, uh, a bird called the Western Tanager. Beautiful bird, only can usually be found if it's in during winter, it's supposed to be only found in in Mexico and Central America. So we're not sure why it was over here, but it was at somebody's backyard feeder just feeding on their um their on their seeds. I'm like, wow. Um, so that was a really big one for me. Uh what's other ones? Uh I've seen oh Rosiette Spoonbill at McAlpine. That was the first recorded sighting of a spoonbill in the county's history. So it was a privilege just to be there witnessing it and just seeing it. That was beautiful. I always still get, um, my heart always skips a beat when I see any birds of prey. So red tail hawks, red shoulder hawks, and obviously bald eagles. Um, I will, I wish I can see a peregrine falcon, but we haven't seen them. I, I haven't seen them here in Mecklenburg County, but I know there actually is recorded sightings, but there hasn't been a recorded sighting in my, to my knowledge in a little while. So <sighs> other than that, I think there's other birds. I can, I can keep going. There's other birds. I'm gonna stop. 
Well, thank you. That that was a great answer. Um, and I think a few of us here saw uh, the Rosie at Spoonbill. Um, that, that same particular one, I recognize a few people on the call, and I know those people also said that they saw it, so that's pretty cool. And we have a question from Ernie. Yeah, thank you, um, Tara. Um, Matthew, thanks for doing this. Great job on the presentation about our nature preserves. My question is with uh, land being what it is and hard to come by and finances, is Mecklenburg County done with nature preserves or will they try to eke out some more of those uh, before all the land is used up? Thanks. Ah, great question, Mr. Ernie. Um, in, in terms of actually acquiring more land, uh, it is definitely in the plans to get more natural areas. I know in 1997, um, we developed uh, the Mecklenburg County Master Nature Preserve Master Plan, which solely is to acquire more and more natural areas uh, for the local wildlife and for our local residents to experience. So definitely, we are definitely are going to be um, definitely acquiring uh, more and more land and purchasing more and more land. Uh, like I said in the throughout the presentation, there are a few nature preserves that have just been created within the last year or the last two years. My preserve in Stevens Creek, Flat Branch, big I think Big Rock, um, and the other nature preserves. So definitely, definitely, definitely. Thank you, Matthew. And did anyone want to add anything extra before we finish here? This was amazing. And we all have our work cut out for us now. We have a lot of places to go this week and weekend. So um, I hope everyone is excited and, and took some notes. Um, we will be sending over the PowerPoint um, afterwards so you guys can all take a look, the recording. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. And question for Margaret or comment? Just comment. Um, Matthew, uh, I used to work uptown and there was peregrine falcons that lived on top of some of the buildings uptown because you would see them from the windows. So just a comment. You just had to throw that <laughs> in my face, Margaret. You just had to throw that in my face. Well, no, you don't, but they, they, would, they would nest. And then in the other places over at, at um, uh, oh, the place over in Gaston County, uh, everybody goes, um, why can't I think of the name of it? <laughs> but uh, what is the place in, in Mecklen or Gaston County that you hike? Um, Daniel Stowe? There's a park. It's a state park. No, oh. not Daniel Stowe. Over... Crowders, Kings Mountain, Crowders, Crowders Mountain, Crowders Mountain. Crowders Mountain. Falcons, I'll, you'll there's you'll see peregrine falcons there too. Uh, uh, I definitely need to break out break out my binoculars and because I go hiking over there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and I just want to throw out, um, you know, definitely get out the nature preserves as things are starting to to bud out, and you know we'll be moving into spring, but also. They're wonderful places. I mean, go in the fall and shuffle through the leaves. And, and even in the winter, I used to really hate winter, but I've learned to really appreciate it because you see more of the architecture of the trees and of the woods, and, and you'll see things that you normally wouldn't that are hidden by leaves. Um, turn over a log, um, always roll it towards you in case there's something that needs to slither away, it'll slither away from you. Um, but do that in the summer, do it in the winter. I found some really weird fungus, fungi, um, growing on logs, um, under logs. So anyway, there's something there every season. Thanks, Donna. I think we do have one more question from Mike, if you'd like to unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself by clicking the microphone symbol in the top right hand corner, Mike. OK, well, maybe we'll get Mike's question through email and we'll get it over to you, Matthew. But oh, we do have one more question from Levon. I'm Mike. Oh, I didn't Mike. know I, I, I didn't know I uh, had pushed a button, but I, uh, I do have a question anyway. I'm a bird nut, too. 
And um, I, <laughs> Morgan, where's the best place to go out and photograph wading birds right now? Ooh, 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 great question, Mike. Oh, man. Uh, uh, I'm looking for a great answer now, too. Okay. All right. All right. All right. There's going to be a few. There's going to be a few areas, uh, depending on what part of Mecklenburg County or Charlotte Mecklenburg area that you're in. But, you know, birders, as birders, we go to just about anywhere to take pictures. So, well, in Canapolis, but I'll go anywhere. Okay. So, whew, let's see. Jeez. Lake Norman. The Capcom Greenway has a Bravo. resident. Has a resident great blue heron and I think some egrets. Yep. Which McAlpine. Greenway? McAlpine Greenway Park. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Uh, McAlpine, when you go to that park, there's two ponds. Uh, in the beaver pond, that's where you see a lot of wading birds at, uh, located at, especially the resident great blue heron. Um, it's March now, so they're probably gone, but... There, you, there was there was once a uh, population of uh, hooded regansers at the pond at Clark's Creek, but it's marching out. They might have already left. West Branch, definitely you want to go out there because I know I sp spotted quite a few wading birds and waterfowl there. Uh, let's see, what else? Any of the larger nature preserves, Lada, McDowell, you're going to spot wading birds, grady grids. Uh, great blue herons, um, among other things. And at a lot of nature preserve and uh, McDowell, you're definitely going to spot ospreys diving into the water and hunting um, fish. So, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, this was wonderful, and we will see you all soon. Have a great night. Get out there and explore the nature preserves. Thanks, thank everybody. You. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.